Studying at university in England used to be free, but then tuition fees were introduced in 1998. In the last UK election in 2010, many students voted for the Liberal Democrats, the party that promised to axe tuition fees. But when they formed the coalition government with the Conservative Party, not only did they go back on their promise, annual tuition fees were tripled from three to nine thousand pounds. The raising of fees helped um, change the way that we think about what a university is and how it's um, meant to operate in whose interest it operates and what kind of person you are when you go to university. What we now have is a set of customers out there whose conception of the relation they have to the university is more as a place which is selling them a product which they can cash in for a, a job later. Free education! No! I'm the first generation to graduate with nine grand fees. I've got a huge slab of debt that's now tying me down. And in this economy, it's unlikely I'm going to get a job that's going to do well enough to like, look after me. The police have formed a line and said anyone who is like overtly political or has political opinions inside isn't allowed to go in. So we think all students should be allowed to go in. It's obvious if you're a student at Brighton University, you should be able to go onto your own campus. But at the moment, the police are forming a line and blocking us all going in. We academics, we have no say either. Things are announced from top and we merely implement decisions. We are seeking for more democracy in the university, in all the processes of the university politics. And with the government's most recent announcements in the Green Paper and otherwise, you know, with maintenance grants, the poorest students are now going to be in the most debt. They're going to be in £53,000 of debt, the million poorest students when they leave university. And there's going to be huge changes to things like the loan repayment thresholds. So they're going to come down, so you have to pay back more earlier uh, and you'll be worse off the whole of your adult life. Um, with the teaching excellence framework, teaching is going to be graded how good it is based on how good the like, teachers are at producing employable graduates. When I went to university, I got a full grant. I'm almost 40. Um, when my niece will go to university, she'll get nothing and she'll leave university, well if she goes to university, she'll leave university with like 60 grand, 80 grand debt. That's just so unfair. So there's a whole huge range of issues that are really too complex to distill down into one single message. We in the United States tend to think that, it was, that the radicalism, the student or youth radicalism of the late 60s and early 70s was, was an American phenomenon. But in fact, it was a phenomenon that was spread over enormous parts of the world. There's something happening here but What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware. Uh, after the uh, activism of the 1960s, uh, there was great concern. Uh, young people were just getting too uh, free and independent, uh, that the country was becoming too democratic, and so on. And in the 1960s in the United States, there was, of course, like most places in the world, an upheaval, a gigantic social upheaval of um, resistance and opposition to uh, the past, to the structures of um, capital and power that existed in society. The government, of course, the elites confronted a problem. Uh, they didn't want this to recur. And in fact, since that time, there have been many measures taken to try to uh, turn uh, the educational system towards uh, more control, more indoctrination, uh, uh, more vocational training, uh, 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 imposing a debt which traps students, young people, into a life of conformity and so on. But this is something which is part of a certain general tendency happening all over the world. And this tendency is linked to my mind with the process of commoditization of education. That everywhere there is a tendency that something called education should be bought and sold like any other commodity in the market. And those doing so, those selling education should in fact run this business like they run factories and earn a profit out of it. One of the things that neoliberalism does is um, make every, every individual think of themselves as um, 
as an entrepreneur, as a form of human capital, in Wendy Brown's words. So we value, we, we start seeing ourselves as um, forms of capital which we need to make attractive for future employers. And I think that radically changes how we think about um, what um, the university is. And the university pushes, um, pushes this and is kind of committed to, to that in its neoliberal form at the moment. Well, we can ask ourselves what the purpose of an educational system is. And of course, there are uh, sharp differences on, on this matter. The most recent white paper on, on higher education, which, just to get a sort of flavour of how it's urging us to think about what a university is for, that white paper has 16 mentions of competition, 14 mentions of innovation, and not a single mention in its 100 pages on ideas, thought, reflection, or discovery. So there's been a kind of... Um bringing in of best practices into the university from business and corporate sectors where the language we use to speak, to speak about the university um, is directly picked up from the corporate sector and I think that's true for issues around teaching as well that teaching needs to be justified as having an impact increasingly um, on wide on the kind of wider communities of outside of the university which in principle is great and of course everyone wants the knowledge to be able to spread around um, but the problem is, is that the way that those forms of impact get assessed end up policing the type of work you can do. Uh, uh, Newman said 50 years ago that existing in institutions must be free to experiment in their organisational forms without any predetermined limitations. And he spoke of the scope for individual and institutional initiative that he argued was key to the intellectual development of the students. Imagine your vice-chancellors saying that now. Ultimately these, these kinds of forms of policing and disciplining never really um, emerge from one situation or the other. It's not just the government that's doing it or the management that's doing it um, or the heads of departments or whatever. Um, these are kind of regulative regimes that emerge and support each other um, which makes it very hard to be able to work out who the enemy is and where is the best place to kind of foster forms of resistance certainly are powerful structures in the society which would prefer people to be indoctrinated, conform, not ask too many questions, be obedient, uh, fulfill the uh, roles that are assigned to you and don't try to shake systems of power and authority. From time to time a feeling descends upon huge numbers of people in huge parts of the world it is now suddenly possible to create a society of a different sort. We're not satisfied with the way that this country and with the way systems like higher education are being run, and we're prepared to get out on the streets and do something about that. The coalition came in with a big budget deficit and had to reduce public spending and reduce the deficit. And actually, I think we achieved that. But in terms of like the justifications that we're given that we have this deficit, and that, that therefore, because we have a deficit, that we need to reduce this deficit, which is already a kind of jump in argument, because that's not always been the way that um, economics has worked. British universities have been thought to be among the best in the world. The best quality at the most economical rate. Britain is now the system which has a public set of institutions which it's attempting to finance through the highest fees for undergraduates in the world. How that will work out is a gamble. The fact that then the new fee regime is on, on its own terms fails is interesting. That the deficit becomes a tool to be able to police um, and shift the structures of how society works. These are, these are real source of anger, but also alongside anger, despair for people. And so I think that's why you get protests with the character they've got here, where people aren't just, you know, sitting down and having a chat about things and trying to convince people they are angry. And when they're confronted by the police who start pushing them and start manhandling them, they're angry and they'll tell them to fuck off. Uh, me and my uh, co-editor co were standing in Parliament Square in 2010 watching the riot police batter students, um, many thousands, tens of thousands of them, who had tried to take over Parliament Square um, against the trebling of tuition fees. Now, it's important to say that the trebling of tuition fees was a spark. It was a spark for lots of things. 
So Free University Brighton, it's a, a reassertion of the values of why, why higher education is important, as much as it is creating the possibilities for people who would otherwise be excluded from doing forms of studying, um, creating the conditions to allow them to enter into forms of study with other people. Yeah, well I set up Free University Brighton about four years ago and the reason really was because the government had trebled the tuition fees so education was sort of becoming increasingly inaccessible to people so I had the idea of maybe setting up a, a sort of free community-led scheme. It's a project which is being built by the people that are signing up to be teachers and the people that are signing up to be students and the people that are signing up to just support it administratively. What we're doing is we're trying to sort of provide a model uh, for how education could be free and, and, and I guess it's like a campaign as well. A, we're reminding people that education can be free and it should be really. I mean, lifelong learning is something everyone should have access to. And really the knowledge sits within the community. You know, we have the knowledge and we can share it if we want to.